Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, second attempt because the first attempt I was just rambling and like four minutes in I had to blow my nose and I didn't feel like editing that out. Um, but this is a response to a video from a couple days ago by Comic Drake titled The Problem with Ms. Marvel. And um, I, uh, I was shocked when I heard this, shocked, because I'm so used to YouTube having devolved into just like shitheads with clickbait that when someone discusses something sincerely in an informed way even if I don't agree with them it feels it feels fake <laughs> like it's like um I was talking to a friend I was like uh I go crowdfunded books almost never feel real to me there was this um it was like the 50th anniversary of Superman and John Byrne did the art for the cover. I should have gotten this ready for the video. Um, and the art looked great, but then you could tell like somebody at Time Magazine did the lettering because the lettering looked close but off. And then Superman referred to his powers as being supernatural. And I just remember just like, it just, it was like, like it was so offensive to like every comic book fan at the time. But anyway... So um, I'm just not, I'm not used to people not being huge assholes all the time. He just has an idea and he talks about it and he edits it and he talks about battle soap or whatever the thing he's endorsing. Um, please, if you're a fan, please explain the orb. I've only seen a couple of his videos. He, nothing wrong with his channel. It's just um, it's for a different audience. Um, but. At first, I thought this was like an oversized microphone, like a novelty microphone, but it seems to be like something, like it's blanking out what he's holding. I, I went through the last couple uh, videos. He doesn't consistently do this. I remember watching him a while ago and his thing was like he would hold oversized mugs, like as a conversation starter. To, I don't know. Anyway, so um, you think... This is going to be just him, you know, like he says he's like ride or die for this character. And I was like, yeah, probably like dick ride or die because you're just going to say she's great and anyone. No, he doesn't, he doesn't do, he doesn't do, do the whole thing where he's like, she's great. And if you don't like her, she's a bigot. He basically says, well, he misses some key things. And from what I remember of si <coughs> similar videos he's done. They've been mostly sincere, but he leaves things out to the point where you're like, did you leave that out on purpose because that hurts the point you're making or did you just decide to focus on something else? So he hits some points and he does seem to sincerely like the character, not just like the idea of the character. Um, and, and it sounds like he was there from like, you know, the first issue of the uh, first um of many runs, but he just kind of runs it down. He's like, uh, so Kamala Khan is kind of stuck. She's almost like Dazzler. He doesn't make this analogy, but I will. Um, in that Dazzler was meant to jump on the disco bandwagon literally as the trend was coming to an end. So uh, Kamala Khan was like the encapsulation of that like I don't know, like that show The New Girl or that shitty Obama era, like I did a thing, epic doggo, like that type of humor. And then she's like still doing it. Um, that's why I always get on like uh, uh, like anti-SJW YouTube because they are obsessed with like 1990s shock jocks who those guys actually got popular in the late 80s. So this is like a style of humor from 35 years ago. Not even talking about offensive whatever. Like, this is just a really... This would be if, like, Seinfeld, when he got popular in the late 80s, he was doing, like, Milton Berle-style shit from the 1950s. Um, so, so uh, first off, he just says, like, she's she sticks out because she uses this... And it's not just she uses it. Like, that's it's infused in her personality. You know, the Senorita Awesome era of uh, uh, oh-so-quirky humor. Like, that's her. So she's like this weird, outmoded, after-the-fad-has-dead 
character. He then brings up things, uh, you know, some things I've brought up before, where they keep pushing her, you know, as uh, as uh, onto teams to make her popular. When the whole thing that was made her popular was, you know, the first run was actually legitimately good. There was only really one flaw with it in that it didn't create good villains for her. So she's never had a rogues gallery at all. She still doesn't 10 years in. And I mean, you think about any other character that's popular, you know, Spider-Man, he had a full rogues gallery within two years. I mean, everyone does. I think the only, I mean, uh, Daredevil's got a weird, like there's different strata. Like he had one rogues gallery for the first 10 years and then they're like, can we just have Kingpin? They had to ask the Spider-Man office, then Kingpin got brought in and then uh, Andesenti created a whole ton of them. And then his current rogues gallery is kind of, of a mix. It's, it's like pre-Frank Miller, then Frank Miller, and then Andesenti. So that's what it is. But um, yeah, so she's she's got this old-fashioned, you know, no longer popular... Uh, sense of humor. She has no rogues gallery. They keep pushing her onto teams that she doesn't belong on and don't it doesn't have the intended effect of making her more popular because what made her popular and I know a lot of people hate her but like I said when it started out it was a legitimately good book. It was basically like first year of Spider-Man meets Archie. And it had some quirky but quality art. And G. Willow Wilson was writing it. It was, it was just, it was good. I've read those issues. Drake does leave out like major problems like that. <laughs> just like a couple years in, right when she was getting all that media attention, she was a cop putting her peers in jail for pre-crime, one of whom got permanently disfigured trying to rescue the others, and we just never talk about it. I would contend that that was the point where the character broke bad, or just broke. Because the storyline went around for a while. It was part of a larger storyline that was referred to for a while, and it was never retcon. It was never, oh, that wasn't really her. It was a clone. There was some sort of influence. It was a robot, whatever. The problem was they had this thing back then where they thought that a character being popular in the universe meant you would like them. So they'd be like, Captain Marvel is not only hugely popular among the comic buying audience, but also in the world, in the Marvel 616. She's everyone's favorite hero. They would do two things. They would say, this character is popular, so what's wrong with you for not liking them? Then they would say, this person's more powerful than everyone else. Isn't that? And it's like, you really don't know how comics work, do you? Like the most popular characters are street level, you know? Daredevil, Spider-Man, Gambit. These people are not tossing planets around. That's not, and also like making them popular, that had the opposite effect because it was basically, it, it was it was very clear what they were doing. And then, yeah, they would say, oh, if you don't like this character, you hate women or you're just from that group of bigots. But there wasn't that controversy when the character launched. It was when they started forcing the character, ordering you to like her and then attacking you uh, if you did it. So so there was like, uh, uh, he never mentions the pressure to like this character. That was not there in the first few years, but it did pop up. He talked about this character being lightning in a bottle. I would say it would be more like lightning bugs in a bottle. Like it's like, it's, it's fun, it's seasonal, but it's not something to build upon. I mean, the whole look was because the Marvel movies were becoming mainstream, which means there was a lot of fake geek girls. Cosplay was becoming a thing with fake geek girls. So it's like, let's make a really easy to cosplay costume. So they did that with Batgirl and they did that with um, Ms. Marvel. I mean, you barely need to know how to sew. To It's, 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 it's a smock. 
You know, anybody can make a smock. That's like home ec second assignment. Um, so uh, then he gets into a weird tangent where he's like, they're trying to treat Kamala like she's in college, but she isn't. So they keep putting her in college programs while in high school. And he does I have to give him credit because they always do this thing where they're like, this female character, she's the most, she's super popular. Everyone loves her and she's super powerful and she's a genius. And he's like, she's on an internship and he's basically like, yeah, she's not smart enough to get, she's like a geek. You know what I mean? Like she writes fanfic. She's not a technical genius. There's no, and, but like the whole time I'm sitting there, it's like, she could be a diversity hire. Like that could be part, like, and that's this weird thing they do where they want to work in this world, you know, where they say like, oh, if, if you don't like them, it means you hate brown people. Although weirdly enough, her skin is like purple gray and they always make her hair look like the wigs that that one uh, sect of uh, Jewish women, uh, it's in uh, Brooklyn, right? Whole neighborhood. They're all wearing these beautiful wigs. I thought I thought it was their hair. I had to be corrected. But like, yeah, she's got like the Jewish lady wig that's like almost the color of her skin and then purple gray skin because she's, you know, you have to you have to know that she's not a white person. Um, even though she's created by well, supposedly created by Sana Amanat, who has basically the same skin tone that comic Drake has. Um the other thing, and he does comment on it, he's talking about like her stretching powers, they're a symbol for like being awkward and growing up, but it's not used that way. It's just used as, isn't this so quirky? Where, as I've said a million times, and literally every time I say this, every woman is like, that's correct. Being misshapen is the nightmare of all women. It's not like, oh, isn't that so fun? I'm disproportionate. God, no. And she never uses that to like, oh, I'm going to make myself look better or be taller. Or this guy likes, I don't know, he likes Asian girls. So I'm going to make myself look a little bit more, you know, Chinese. Um, they don't do anything with it besides <laughs> her hands are really large. And then even stuff like she says embiggen, which is like a Simpsons joke from like 1994. <laughs> and, and like... That was, so, so she's like got these ancient senses of humor. Um, she has a power that no woman would actually want. They keep pushing her onto teams that she doesn't belong on in an effort to make her more popular and it makes her less popular. They keep rebooting and it even makes a point. He goes, yeah, I know you can Google it, but if you don't, how are you supposed to know which one is the first one? Because she's had like eight number one issues and then um but uh sorry in my mind this was a better video it was more focused um I th it was this damn orb once i because i listened to it the first two times and then the third time I, I looked at it i'm just like why is there an orb it's so dis and i know it's a bit and i know you're supposed to ask about it but it's like what is it <laughs> It's driving me crazy. And also, what is this color? This is one of those, like, only women know how to name this color. It's like, oh, that's taupe or something like that. Ambergris. It's, if it's not, you know, the original 16 colors from Crayola, like, guys don't know. Like, what is It's like off-brand blue. I don't know. What is it? It's bothering me. But anyway, so um, this is going to be a better video. And then this orb confused me um but i i did really appreciate it because i'm used to youtube just evolving into very political politicized shitheads acting like shock jocks and just like epic meltdown and just like the worst and th the other thing is just like the same just like the similar like you have to have one if for your side you like so something comes out and you just get like six videos from six channels saying the exact same thing like they changed the banner at Disney. They replaced She-Hulk with Deadpool. Ha 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 Like, what? 
That's the pettiest shit to care about. And like six channels did the exact same. So he actually, so obviously he likes his character and he wants his character to do better. But I wouldn't call this a mindless defense of the character. I would say it was sincere. The only issues I have are, you know, leaving out her being a brown shirt and arresting uh, (laughs) her friends. Leaving out that her love interest is permanently crippled. Because he was trying to undo what she did, or at least what she uh, was party to. Um, the pressure to like her, the attacks on people who criticized her, basically in any way. Um, he does uh, touch upon this, but he doesn't really elaborate. I've mentioned this, that having read a good amount of her stories, especially like 2018 to 2020, there are three distinctly different Kamala Khan's out there, just in comics. Like, nobody really knows how to write her. Sometimes she's written like a drill sergeant. Sometimes she's... uh, I was surprised. I thought she was in college. Because that's... Like, they keep doing, like, college stories, but he's like, no, she's not in college. She's in high school, but going to college programs. So they write her like she's very, like, grown and serious, and then she's like, epic doggo puppers mustaches unicorns you're like okay choose a struggle seriously um okay video title right there (laughs) but um yeah this video is a lot better in my head before i started in this orb just completely threw me off but he makes a good point that this character started well was liked popular Mm -hmm. you know they have the thing it's like oh she went through seven printings but it was also because you know, you get a spot in Scholastic. They can put like three books in there. All the books do well. Every book in Scholastic does well. So they gave her a primo, you know, position to be successful. But that first year is legitimately good. Um, then it gets a little wobbly when they restart and she has to go be a brown shirt for a space fascist. Then they just pretend like that never happened. They just put her on a bunch of teams with like three different uh, personalities. And now she's just... And the thing is, you can tell he's like, okay, this is where we're really going to get it right. Now, yeah, there have been characters that got much more popular later. Like Daredevil was around for like more than 10 years before he got super popular. I just feel like, like, what are you going to do? She's built around an old-fashioned sense of humor. She's got this weird fascism storyline that isn't being retconned, but also isn't being dealt with in any way. She looks dopey. She has dumb powers that no woman wants. All you can really do is get that crew from the first year. G. Willow Wilson, I believe it was two artists, not exactly the same style, but kind of in the same category. And get them back and just be like, Kamala's going to college. And we got the original crew back. That's honestly the only hope. And then you either got to retcon the fascism thing or deal with it in some way. You know, have her confronted. Have, you know, she goes to ESU, which is their version of NYU. And it's kind of everything. It's, it's kind of their version of Columbia. It's kind of their version of NYU. Um, and she, she just gets confronted. They're like, they're like protesting. They're like, down to fascists. And she's like, yeah. You know, like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you were arresting your peers for pre-crime. Um, somebody, I forget which channel, they were talking about something. And in publishing, it happened like a year or two ago. So they were like, in universe, this, this, you know, this is, an, no, in universe, that was like a couple months ago. That was maybe six months ago. So even though that happened, you know, eight years ago in publishing, that would have happened like whatever, when she was like a sophomore. So people would still be do like, do you remember what, like, they would probably think she was like the sidekick to Captain Marvel. So like, do you remember when Captain Marvel's sidekick was like arresting high school kids and putting them in jail? Like... And she have to deal with that. So maybe she, you know, does something to change that or shit. Maybe she, she gets into it. I had a friend say something really interesting. He said he thinks that the Trump administration is going to be really good for mainstream comics. 
really bad for crowdfunding because he's like the purchases for crowdfunding they were essentially protest votes and now not only is trump back but he's with a mandate he's with the popular vote so there's no reason to do these protest votes of buying you know books that you don't intend on reading and so you know mags is going to get work again t franklin but the this is going to material materially affect the sales of uh and i try i've seen some evidence some other uh people who have had pretty solid sales until now and then their latest one a lot less and you're like yeah maybe this idea that crowdfunding was a protest vote and with both trump back in power plus you know dc is getting a lot more solid there's like good solid dc stuff every week uh image and um Enter John uh, as well, a couple times a month. Uh, Marvel, not really so much. But there's enough good books to ride your bicycle three miles in the Nebraska heat uh, to buy them. So anyway, this damn orb, man. This video was going to be so freaking good. It was focused. I had a little bit I was going to do at the at the beginning with like a, a fake endorsement. It was, oh, it was so funny. I was like... Bouncing ideas back and forth with ChatGPT, and then then I actually looked at it. And I saw this damn orb, and I ain't been right since. I don't think I'm ever gonna be the same. So um, anyway, good. I really appreciate it. It's it was nice to be reminded that comics YouTube isn't just a platform for reactionary shitheads with the most low effort clickbait material imaginable. It used to be. And still is, you know, people who like comics, read comics, want comics to do better. This definitely comes from the goal of Ms. Marvel comics being basically as good as they were when they started. And they were good, the f like the very first year. Those were good, just good, solid, you know, oh, I got superpowers and oh, should I tell me? Like that type of stuff. That was fine. But, um, god damn it, this damn orb really just threw me for a loop. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.